what if I told you that the world's largest cargo plane, a colossal feat of engineering, was destined to be too big for its own good? A plane built to carry the impossible, yet somehow its sheer size was its undoing. This is the story of the Antonov AN-225 Maria, a giant that soared to great heights but ultimately couldn't sustain its place in the skies. In 1988, the Antonov AN-225 Maria made its first flight, instantly earning its place as the largest cargo plane ever to take to the skies. With a wingspan wider than a football field and capable of carrying up to 250 tons, this behemoth was designed to haul the Soviet Union's space shuttle, Buran. But its true purpose was far grander. This aircraft was meant to defy the limits of what air travel could achieve, carrying cargo too heavy, too large, and too impossible for any other plane. But as incredible as the Maria was, its sheer size would prove to be its undoing. With wings stretching over 88 meters and a maximum weight surpassing 640 tons, it wasn't just a plane, it was a logistical nightmare. While other aircraft might simply be big, the Antonov AN-225 was on a scale entirely its own. The aircraft's weight was so massive that most airports didn't even have the infrastructure to accommodate it. Runways had to be reinforced to bear the weight of its landing gear, and even then, only a handful of airports around the world were capable of handling its gargantuan dimensions. Imagine the complexities. Just getting this massive beast from one location to another wasn't easy. Specialized ground equipment had to be used just to move the plane around. The Maria's cargo hold could carry an incredible array of oversized loads, but the aircraft itself was so large that only a very small number of cities had the infrastructure to even support its arrival. And then there was the maintenance. Every inch of the AN-225 required careful attention from a specialized team. While most planes had their engines easily accessible, the AN-225's six massive turbofan engines were positioned in a way that required unique scaffolding and machinery to maintain, making repairs expensive and time-consuming. And the fuel? The Maria consumed it by the bucket load. With six engines burning millions of liters of fuel, the operational costs were so astronomical that only a select few companies could afford to keep it in the air. In an era where efficiency and cost were paramount, this was a plane that came with a price tag that was far too high to maintain its place in modern aviation. To accommodate its massive weight, the AN-225 was equipped with six engines and reinforced wings, making it capable of lifting unprecedented cargo into the sky. But these incredible feats of engineering came with their own issues that no one had anticipated. Engineers didn't just build a plane, they built an engineering masterpiece that pushed the very limits of what was possible. The Maria's wingspan, wider than the length of a football field, had to be perfectly balanced with its massive body. To counteract the immense weight, the fuselage was built from specially reinforced materials that could bear the load while the wings were designed to generate enough lift to keep the giant in the air. But it wasn't just about brute strength. To manage the AN-225's weight and size, the aircraft's landing gear system had to be nothing short of revolutionary. The AN-225 was equipped with 32 wheels, each one capable of handling an incredible amount of weight. These wheels were designed to rotate independently, allowing the plane to move smoothly even in the tightest spaces. A hydraulic steering system allowed it to turn on a dime, a feature that gave the plane the agility needed for its massive size. And then there were the six engines, each one of these behemoths was a marvel of modern aviation engineering. The AN-225's engines were custom-built to generate the thrust needed to push such a massive aircraft off the ground. The engines were arranged in a unique configuration, with four mounted on the wings and two at the tail, creating a perfect balance of power and stability. This wasn't just a plane, it was an engineering solution to the impossible. But even with all these advancements, the AN-225 was still a gamble a masterpiece of technology and design that could conquer the sky, but ultimately, the world around it just wasn't ready for it. But here's the thing you might not know. The AN-225 wasn't just built to haul cargo. It was more than an aircraft. It was the embodiment of Soviet ambition, a symbol of national pride, and a testament to what could be achieved when there were no limits. The plane's creation was tied to the USSR's desire to outpace the West in technological innovation during the Cold War. The AN-225 wasn't just a tool, it was a statement, 
one that screamed, we can do the impossible. When the AN-225 was first conceived, it was designed to carry the Soviet Union's space shuttle, Buran. But what's less known is that the Antonov design team, led by the brilliant Oleg Antonov, had to push every boundary to make it happen. The AN-225 wasn't just built for speed or efficiency. It was built for a very specific mission, to carry the Buran back from space launches. The sheer scale of the aircraft made it the perfect vehicle for a mission no other plane could ever tackle. But after Buran's mission ended, the AN-225 found a new life as the world's largest cargo hauler, transporting loads no other plane could even dream of lifting. Now, here's the kicker. For all its massive size and towering presence, the Maria only ever had one operational counterpart, just one. That's right, for years, the Antonov AN-225 remained a one-of-a-kind aircraft with no immediate plans to create a second. For the longest time, the world thought it was an experiment, a grand vision that was never meant to be replicated. So when it flew, it wasn't just a plane, it was a marvel of human ingenuity, and at the same time, a reminder of how limited even the greatest ambitions can be. While it could carry the heaviest of loads, the AN-225 couldn't fit into most airports. Its massive wingspan required specialized runways and taxiways, and the cost to maintain and fuel it was so high that only a few companies could afford to operate it. The Maria wasn't just a plane, it was an entire logistics operation in the sky. Every time it took off, it left behind a trail of challenges that other aircraft didn't face. Imagine this, the AN-225 would often land at airports that were simply not built for its scale. The plane's size meant that airports had to be specially equipped to handle it, which limited the routes it could fly. Only a handful of airports in the world could accommodate the Maria, meaning that it was relegated to a select few destinations. Most commercial airports couldn't support the weight or the size of this flying giant, making its mange practically irrelevant. It was a marvel, yes, but it was also confined. Then there was the fuel. With six massive turbofan engines, the AN-225 burned through fuel at a staggering rate. A single trip could consume more fuel than some aircraft would use in an entire week. In a world that was growing increasingly focused on fuel efficiency, the Maria's thirst for fuel became a significant problem. The costs were astronomical. Running a single flight could bankrupt a smaller airline. And when you added in the high maintenance costs, replacing parts, the specialized equipment needed to repair it, and the long downtime between flights, the Maria quickly became more of a burden than a practical solution. What once seemed like a technological triumph had become a logistical nightmare. The very features that made the AN-225 so impressive were also the ones that limited its practicality in the modern world of aviation. Its size, its fuel consumption, its complexity. These were the struggles that turned it from a technological wonder into a giant too big to sustain. As the world moved toward more cost-efficient cargo solutions, the AN-225 began to seem more like a relic of a bygone era. Smaller, more fuel-efficient cargo planes could do the same work without the astronomical operational costs. The massive size that once made the Maria so impressive now became its Achilles heel. In the face of rising fuel prices, environmental concerns, and an evolving global market, the need for such a colossal aircraft started to diminish. The aviation world was changing rapidly. Airlines, already pressed by razor-thin profit margins, were looking for planes that could maximize efficiency. The demand for carrying massive single loads, like the ones the AN-225 was designed for, was niche at best. Sure, the Maria could haul things that no other plane could, but it wasn't needed on every flight. The market was moving towards smaller aircraft that could make more frequent flights, serving multiple destinations with lower operating costs and higher versatility. Enter the era of twin-engine aircraft. Planes like the Boeing 747-8 and the Airbus A380 could carry large payloads, but with far better fuel efficiency, operational flexibility, and a wider range of routes. What the AN-225 could do, these newer aircraft could do as well, sometimes better, at a fraction of the cost. Smaller planes like the Boeing 767 and the Airbus A310 could handle large cargo loads at a fraction of the expense, without the need for the specialized infrastructure the Maria required. In the world of cargo air transport, efficiency became king. The AN-225, once a symbol of Soviet ambition and technological power, now stood in stark contrast to a market that no longer needed a giant to get the job done. It was a plane out of time, a marvel in its own right, 
but out of place in an era that valued practicality over size. Despite its legendary status, the AN-225 couldn't escape the harsh realities of modern aviation. The world was changing, and with it, the very nature of air cargo. As twin-engine aircraft became more reliable, fuel-efficient, and capable of serving a broader range of routes, the Colossal Maria began to fade into the background. What was once the world's most awe-inspiring aircraft now seemed like an extravagant relic, too big, too costly, and too specialized for a world that was moving towards smaller, smarter, and more economical aircraft. For years, the AN-225 had dominated the skies, its engines roaring as it carried oversized cargo no other plane could handle. But as the years passed, the aircraft's role in the industry began to shrink. The market for massive single-load cargo was dwindling, replaced by more frequent, cost-effective flights that could cater to a wider variety of needs. Airlines, struggling with rising fuel costs and operational inefficiencies, were no longer willing to invest in such a high-maintenance aircraft that could only be used for a limited number of flights. The sheer size of the Maria, once its crowning achievement, had now become its greatest disadvantage. Airports could only handle it on rare occasions, and the specialized equipment needed to load and unload cargo was expensive and time-consuming. The logistics of operating the AN-225 were complex, and its fuel consumption was astronomical. The cost of keeping it in the air far outweighed the limited opportunities to put it to use. Ultimately, the AN-225 was left to carry out only a handful of missions, far from the glory days when it was the undisputed giant of the skies. As the aviation world embraced more practical, efficient solutions, the once great Maria seemed like an idea ahead of its time, but one that was no longer relevant in a changing world. Although it's gone, the legacy of the AN-225 lives on. It's a reminder of a time when aviation wasn't just about efficiency, it was about pushing the limits of what was possible. The Maria's towering presence in the skies served as a symbol of human ambition, where engineers weren't constrained by what was practical, but instead aimed to break boundaries and redefine what we thought was achievable. It was a plane built to carry the impossible, and in many ways, it succeeded. Even as it faded into history, the AN-225 continued to inspire. Its design wasn't just about brute strength, it was about daring to think bigger, imagining a world where size wasn't a limitation, but an opportunity. For engineers today, the AN-225 serves as a benchmark, a symbol of what can happen when imagination and innovation collide. Its complex engineering solutions, its ability to carry oversized cargo across the globe, and its unmatched design have influenced generations of aircraft engineers, pushing the boundaries of what we expect from future aircraft. But perhaps its most profound legacy isn't just in the blueprints or technology it left behind, it's in the spirit of exploration that it embodied. The AN-225 wasn't just a plane, it was an exploration of what might be possible if we weren't afraid to think bigger. Even now, aircraft like the Boeing 747-8 or Airbus A380 owe part of their success to the lessons learned from the Maria's bold approach to engineering. The Antonov AN-225 Maria may no longer dominate the skies, but its influence will never be forgotten. It remains an icon of aviation a tribute to the unrelenting pursuit of innovation, and a reminder that sometimes the biggest ideas are the ones that change the world. The pilots who flew the AN-225 speak with reverence about their time on board. It wasn't just another flight, it was an experience, one that will forever remain etched in their memories. They describe the feeling of taking control of something so massive, yet so agile in the air. To command the world's largest cargo plane wasn't just about navigating skies, it was about mastering an icon. For the crew, every takeoff was a reminder of the unique responsibility they carried. Every landing, a sense of accomplishment that few could ever claim. But it wasn't just the crew that felt this way. Passengers who had the rare opportunity to travel on the Mariah often spoke of the thrill of stepping into the belly of such a giant. They could feel the immense power of the aircraft, the overwhelming size of the interior, and the unmistakable hum of the six engines. For them, it wasn't just a flight. It was a once-in-a-lifetime experience that few others could match. Flying on the AN-225 wasn't just about getting from one place to another. It was about the magic of being part of aviation history. The Antonov AN-225 may have flown only for a limited time, but its impact was undeniable. It made the impossible seem achievable, and it will forever hold a special place in the hearts of aviation enthusiasts around the world. D. 
Did you ever witness the mighty AN-225 in action? Or maybe you've heard stories of its legendary flights. Share your thoughts in the comments below. Let's talk about what made this giant so special and what it meant to the world of aviation. The AN-225 might have been too big to last, but it will always be remembered as one of aviation's greatest marvels. It was a testament to the ambition and determination of those who built it, a flying symbol of what was possible when engineers dared to dream bigger. The Mariah may no longer soar through the skies, but its legacy will continue to inspire future generations of aviators, engineers, and dreamers who push the boundaries of what flight can achieve. Its place in history is secured, not just for its size, but for the bold spirit it embodied. It proved that sometimes the greatest ideas are the ones that challenge the status quo, the ones that dare to defy convention. The AN-225 story might have ended, but it's one that will live on in aviation lore. Stay tuned for more incredible aviation stories. Next, we'll explore another iconic aircraft that changed the way we think about flight. You won't want to miss it. So make sure to hit subscribe and turn on the notification bell so you don't miss what's coming next. Thanks for watching and keep looking up.